that uh, myself and my good friend Kevin Christie and my other great friend Bo Goy, two of my favorite peoples on the planet, uh, we've been doing it for years, and here we are. And we are at the Rocktail Studio, which is one of my Cheers. favorite places. And you might have seen me here doing Ahmed Zappa's podcast. He is the uh, creator and owner of this fantastic studio, and he has had us. So we are going to start our day off with a guest, which we've never had. Mm. And he's going to show us a special watch, and then we will get into all the watches that were released today. What do you have, buddy? Well, f first of all, it's so good to see your happy, shiny face. Oh, I love you. you. I follow you. Thank you. You can just go fuck yourself. Right? Uh, right? Right? I'm oh, hell with you. Right? To hell with you. Right? Uh, of course, I don't mean that. Um, I'm nervous to show you uh, because you guys really do love your watches so much. So I feel like I'm going to be uh, made fun of and potentially judged. No, I, man. I picked some I stuff mean, out of there already. I brought a G-Shock here today. <laughs> okay, I, I, have, I, have some, well, I have some G-Shocks in here. Yeah. All right. So, so I actually really stopped wearing watches. Yeah. Uh, and I do fantasize about getting kind of back into the watch game. So maybe, maybe this will be the kind of inspiration. Why'd you stop wearing watches? Because um, I, uh, the the watch that I is, is my fantasy is really just a solid gold Rolex. There you yeah. go. Right? So buy that's, one. That's that's really what I want. Um, but I don't want a vintage one, and I don't mm. feel like spending you know what fifty thousand mm. dollars on a Submariner. No. Twenty five to get you started. Oh, yeah. a sub? You want a Submariner? A gold? sub or a day date? I want a sub. A sub. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've tried on a gold sub. It's hard to beat. Yeah. It's the best. It's, it's a it's classic. It's a dirty one. It's mm -hmm. dirty. Also, <laughs> that one's dirty. We'll get into it when you're gone, but Tudor dropped an all gold right. today. That yep. is Blackberry. fantastic for 30 grand. And it is next level. Green dial, green bezel. Well, so so you know, I also like the the Daytona. Too. Oh, yeah. Well, solid right. gold Daytona. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. So here, here's here's what I wanted to show you because yeah. you said that you're you're doing this, and I was like, oh, you got to come over here. Um, but here's a here's a watch that um, need it definitely needs to be fixed. I, I think it got some uh, moisture in there. I may be able to help with that. Okay, uh, but I, I want to I want it to be working <laughs> top notch. But this watch here, I don't know if you can see that. Set it up here, I guess. Here, I, I, yeah. can you guys see we that? We appear over there? to be dealing with a two tone date just. Yeah, yeah. thirty six millimeter. Okay, I'm gonna go one six zero one three diamond dial. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll pass it around the table. But yeah. um, that was. Ronnie James Dio's Rolex. Wow! Really? Yeah. Holy shit! Wow! So Look, when, I got goosebumps. Yeah. So oh, so man. Wendy Dio <laughs> yeah. uh, gave that to me, which which is like such a you know a generous gift. Oh. Um, I helped her out on something, and then she's like, you know what? I want to I want to give this to you as a thank you. And I was like, holy Dude. bananas! It's got the diamond baguettes. Yeah. Now, how long ago was this? Uh, this is probably going on like five years, five years ago. Now, did she tell you, first of all, I never saw Dia wear a Rolex, so did she tell you the uh, origin? Like, did he get it after a record came out, like Holy Diver or he, something? He had a, a, actually a, a, a few Rolexes. Wow. Um, and... Again, this one in particular, I was not it's expecting to. Yeah, it's you passing it around. It's running. It's fine. It just had. It's a good get, sign. It, it gets, needs to okay, be main, main, <laughs> maintenance. Yeah, I mean, mechanical stuff aside, like as far as condition, I mean, that watch at newest is the, like 91, 92, maybe wow. probably older than that. The bracelet, but yeah, the bracelet's good. super tight. Yeah, Look yeah, this that. thing's in great condition. Yeah. So, did she say when he got it and what was up? I'll just make it up. I think he got it right after he locked up the wolves. Right? Yeah. Right? I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he got it right after uh, he went, uh, you know, he was a holy die. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got it right after he, he stared too long in the midnight yeah. sea. Or yeah, he yeah. definitely All got right. it after heaven and hell. For sure. <laughs> That's how moisture got in it. He holy dived with but, it. Uh, I, I, think he, I think he got that in the 80s. Yeah. Um, it's got I'm 80s guessing. written all over uh -huh. it. Like, yeah. that is a dirty 80s Rolex. Did she Rolex. show you it's what nice. other watches he had? Um, I, I I really I can't remember. I know. I, I'm, I get not, it. I'm not like a watch um, um, connoisseur. Yeah, super lover like you are. Yeah. Uh, th this is my other fantasy uh, watch is a solid gold Panerai. 
Oh, no. Interesting. We're going to steer you off that. Well, Interesting. Well, t- talk to me about it. I love the look of it. I yeah. also love a Bell and Ross. Like, I like the square. The square, yeah. yeah. But, but, I, but th- the reason why I don't wear these watches anymore is I'm just not interested in, in anything that looks silver. Wow. I just don't like a silver looking. I have somehow become, you know, gold uh, man. like, yeah. You mid- got an unholy lust for gold. Yeah, uh, yeah I exactly. Yeah. I've become a leprechaun. <laughs> now, question. <laughs> Uh, your father was Frank Zappa. Was he a watch guy? No, I didn't think so. No, no one in the first watch I got, which I got in Paris. I will show you this. Yeah. Um, and I have a, a different bracelet for it somewhere in here. I have the, uh, this is a Breitling. I got this in Paris when I was maybe 18. Yeah. Um, and I have the other uh, band in here somewhere, and it has the battery powered mm-hmm. secondary secondary watch. But uh, that was uh, the first Breitling, and I I always liked Breitling. I bought a, I bought a few of them actually. Um, you Dude, know that Dio watch is killer. I like that Movado. Yeah, right it's a cool there. story. The Movado is cool. This the, little one right there. Oh, this this I just picked up at a at a garage sale. Really. And I have no idea. Do, would you happen to know if with the value of something like that? Yeah, Seven hundred bucks. This is right up your alley. Yeah. I'd say between five hundred and a thousand. I know what you like. This is. This yeah, is that's really a nice one. I yeah. buy that all day. That's sick. Really? Yeah, because like it's this. so classy. I have a small wrist. The titanium. But the time? dial's super yeah. simple. Cool. Oh, this is cool. The, the, you know what's cool on it? It's the, uh, it's crystal. Bro- it's broken. Uh, and that needs to be. Do you re- do you repair watches like that? Yeah, too? sure, absolutely. Um, this guy, first of all, a little bit of everything. It, this guy. I met years ago and continues to blow my mind. Los Angeles Watchworks on Instagram recently, uh, as a few days ago, posted up an Explorer 2 that was completely destroyed and brought this thing back to, it is unreal what he did. This thing uh, runs. Wow. I wound it. <laughs> it's running. And, and, and I love you. Uh, we'll get into that because he's got to go, but... I want to get into what that took to do. But anyway, and you follow them on uh, yeah. Insta. No, look, I, I love watching um, any watch repair video. Yeah. I love any kind of um, Karen video. People go, I, I love <laughs> watching people being sentenced. Yep. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh, when they cry. The cry. Yeah. I the love, lady who fainted. I, I love I oh, love that. Wow. Uh, that dove at the judge. You see that I one? I love that, that was a great one. one. Sentencing, um, great, great. I love like uh, teenagers who are drunk and they they want their dad to come bail them out of a situation. Also they're like good. newly 18 and the great cops video. like, you're an adult now. And they're like, can I just have my mom? I feel like our TikToks are the same. Yeah. <laughs> We're you on the same algorithm. I love these people. There's two of them they get old posters movie posters like jaws that look uh-huh. destroyed and then they slowly bring them back to life like anything you. restoration right? they wipe yeah. them down with water though and it I really stresses me it out it scares me well it's deionized de- it's it's de- water wait with this yeah. this is i use it too this okay. is like a new thing for me there's oh, like I, poster i'm repair? gonna send it to you yeah, it's crazy because i i might i i gotta try to find someone oh, like they're that. in the valley this, these three ladies they will blow your mind I can't believe what they do, actually. Well, and they just do movie posters. They do rock posters. What, just posters, they, yeah. Any posters, yeah. man. Well, they had a Woodstock poster. They had a big trouble little China poster and, like, cleaned up. Well, I, I was gifted. Um, uh, it's a watch show, but I'll just be cl- only because you watch, You mentioned restoration. It's I, a I, dork show. I love show. all that stuff. Yeah. I, I love that. I, and, you, and yes, we yeah. should actually, if you guys ever need... Geeks versus dorks.com. I happen to have that. I think we could turn that into a whole a yeah. whole business. Um, but uh, you own the web domain. I do. <laughs> you, when you renew it every yeah. year, you're like, yeah. this is gonna yeah. pay you to your yeah. wife. It's Babe, gonna hit. Just yeah. listen. Oh yeah. Oh, Trust yeah. me. For sure. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's a great uh, name. Uh, my a very close friend of mine, uh, I used to go buy DVDs, laser discs, how far back it goes. Uh, I, I would have lunch with him. I think all the new um, uh, issues or, or you know product would come out on a Tuesday. So we would go to Dave's Laserdisc in Studio City, which yeah. is no longer there. Um, but Johnny Ramone and I were super tight. Wow. And my middle name is Rodan after the Japanese monsters. And uh, so he bought me these these vintage you know, Godzilla posters oh, nice. that do need a good restoration. So I'm excited it. about that. Oh, it's going to blow your mind. I can't even believe it. Cause now it makes me look at posters. like at swap yeah. meets and stuff and be like, 
oh, I can get that. That's original and bring it back to life. That's awesome. It's well, crazy. Uh, well, uh, I, I do yeah. have to go, but uh, yeah, tell, tell me about... Like, do I have really bad taste in watches? Or, no, you know, but that gold G-Shock is terrible. Right. This, this one is terrible? That one's, a, that one's rough. <laughs> why, why is it rough? Because <laughs> it's gold plastic, which is silly. Uh, which is why I, I love the silliness of it. C-3PO. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so this sake of, when you want to yeah. go into battle yeah. and get found immediately. Or Le Mans or something. The Sportura. Sportura, yeah. yeah. When this thing came out, mm -hmm. it was state-of-the-art. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, it had a pretty strong following here. They, they didn't oh, make too oh, many of them. Oh, let me tell you something. Oh, the guy that the owns Kev? Modernica, these yeah, are rad. That one. Dude, they had a huge these are rad. campaign. Oh, I, I thought that was that. pretty awesome. Oh, I, no. The I, guy that owns Modernica, his name's Jay. He's old now. He has one of those he's been wearing for like 25 years. These, these, this era where like wild style watches are coming back because they're so unique looking. Yeah. And oh, like for that. people that like Rich, Richard Mill and just like wild watches, these are kind of the shit. My, I think my fantasy is like, are my are are, are is my collection worth uh, enough money to where I could sell all of these things, and get a brand new gold Rolex? No, no, you got uh, a little more to go. No, you got just, a little more to go. Dash my, you got here's, you're about halfway there. Here's what you're gonna do. Yeah, now. yeah, you're, you're close to half. You're going to sell all of that except for the Dio. Yeah, don't sell. Well, the Dio, the, the Dio would get you that's the biggest you chunk. Yeah. But that you can't the, sell the Dio. We can't I'm, sell I'm the never deal. selling the Dio. But be dirty. Uh, those are those are my uh, those are my silly watches. Um, but we got to get know. you into one kick-ass watch. That's the key as yeah. an adult when you just have the one that one. you truly like. You wear yeah. it every day until you. It's drop like a leather that. jacket. Yeah. yeah, I just want it to be as as as. We're gonna do know. it. Gold. You're, I think it's you a can gold get a solid sub. gold. Gold sub. Gold sub. You can get one in and around thirty-ish. Yep. Especially now. Now is a good time to buy gold because yeah, it's, it's the that market's real soft. Right. You guys are fucking nerds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I love it. Well, Girls do don't like us, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There's 13 people waiting for this episode to come out. Right the now. women in our lives are bummed on a regular basis. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, steal my watches. Enjoy my watches. I love you, man. Uh, Thanks for letting you. us use your you studio. Too. Here's all that. Oh, yeah. Ha ha have fun. Dude, really nice to meet you in the flesh. You as well. Thank you right? so much. And reach out. Let's make sure that thing's okay. Good to meet you, yeah. man. I, by the way, consider it done. Cool. I, I appreciate you. I don't have a problem um, with this Louis Vuitton. It's fun. You like it? That's a fun Chrono? one. Yeah. It's Whoa. chunky. That thing is heavy as shit. And this this Breitling, too. The Seinfeld. The titanium dual this, time. The yeah. Seinfeld. Yeah. The, the blue this, dial, though. This one. Are you guys familiar with this, uh, this watch company? I like the, the larger sizes. So I was drawn to that. If they made that in gold, I would probably rock that all the time. Jerry the Seinfeld wears one of these this without the blue dot. Ernest Benz, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, Ernest Benz. Yeah, yeah, I've seen these, yeah. Those things are She's substantial. Heavy. Oh, you got this thing. This thing's a quarter pounder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The LV. Well, cheers, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. God bless. Rock to tune into his show, Rock Tales, every Friday. Live at five. And uh, they're live. Marie and Slipper. I've done it before. They had Sebastian Bach on last week. I've done it. All kinds of people. It's a great show. Uh, every Friday. YouTube, right? Yeah, on YouTube, yeah. you can and anywhere else that you can find a podcast if you just want to listen to the audio. Okay, but um, yeah, have fun. I, I hope uh, you you decide to come and do more shows here. You're you're always welcome. You two, no, right? Yeah, right. yeah but no, no, but, no. but Dean, yeah, yes, one hundred percent. I'll be taking you up <laughs> okay? on that for right. sure. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. See you. Now. Let's Thank get you. food. This Take it week. easy. Yeah. Well, All right. Okay. Uh, there he goes right there with the Dio. Fucking Rolex, very cool. Dio, that's hot shit. I love that. I mean, no one's doing this right. without Dio. Yeah, and I would. I wish there if was there's a, a photo picture of him, him with that, the watch yeah, doing that. Right. That's how you sell it. Oh, that's how you sell it. <laughs> I mean, let's if 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 we're if that watch goes to auction, Ronnie James Dio's two tone date just it sells for big money. I figure you'd get towards twenty grand. I think. I Maybe. think a little more. On a like I mean, it's a date just is a very you know it's a very normal Rolex model, but with some provenance and yeah. yeah. I think there's two kinds yeah. of metal fans: very normal income like me, and then there's really really rich metal fans who have like rad the kind of people that have like a Kiss pinball machine. Right. Oh, like yeah. they're down to buy artifacts. Well, they I like buy a, those. They sign buy... cod piece with it though. I mean, that would be yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can find a photo where yeah. he's doing this. Oh my God! You're you're totally oh, yeah. rich. Anytime I think of heavy metal and Rolexes, yeah. there's the Ingve Momstein photo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ingve Momstein guitarist, like 
act like heavy metal solo acrobat, just like finger gymnast. But there's a picture, and it's all his Rolexes on his guitar. All oh, of yeah. them are gold, like gold GMT, gold. Nice. Stuff. Like it's the most beautifully tacky heavy metal '80s thing you've ever. It's magical. <laughs> I have it. It's saved in my computer so many times because every time I see it, I click and drag it just to make sure I have it. It's. I love that photo so I gotta much. Find that. Oh, cool. it <laughs> takes. If you look it up, it takes. It's the first one that comes up. He did Rockstar right. He yeah, got multiple Ferraris. Yeah. You know, when I was interviewing him, he was driving in the Ferrari. He didn't even give a fuck about the quality of the audio or anything. I go, are, are you driving right now? He's like, <laughs> yes, in my incredible Dino 1972. You know? It's That's like, what I, I want excess from my musicians. I don't yeah. want normal people. That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> from that's I've realized that as I've gotten older, like, I want them to be Loonies. completely right. nuts. Yeah. I want them to be exceptional and weird and have weird eccentricities and stories. I don't want to like, oh, that guy's just like me. Who gives a shit? No, I want yeah. Ric Flair. Yeah, yeah, I want a weirdo, Well, that man. gets you madder because you're like, oh, well, he got lucky and we're the same guy, but he's a star. <laughs> yeah. There's no extra skill. Right. No, I want <laughs> David Lee Roth where you're like, I can't yeah. do the splits, man. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you deserve yeah. that. Like that's, you're, you're that dude. All I right. want that. Let's get into it. Uh, they came out this morning. Yep. It was weird because last night around 1130, I was laying in bed and they started popping yep. up. Usually they wait till around 3 a.m. So I'm asleep and then it's 630 in the morning or whatever they're there. But I was like, oh, shit, they're coming over. Yeah. And uh, I started firing them over to Kev, you know, and looking. And it was, uh, I would say. What's your pick, Dean? Well, I think there's an obvious pick. Of all everything. Okay, what are you? Are we talking brand specific or out no? Of, in okay. general, to me, the the Tudor, the new Tudor GMT. Okay, that's that your, thing it, is it, hot shit. It, it smells of the six five four two. I'm a Big little time. worried about the height. Right. The it looked it's a little the 41, tall. Forty one, right? No, 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 no. It's thirty nine. Okay. But the the height on it looked a little tall. But I wonder, even at thirty nine, it wouldn't even matter. Nah. But that bezel, the the dial, the balance of the look of it is so good. Yeah. I just love the way it looks. What about you? Mm, probably the Le Mans, the gold, the gold Daytona. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, they they discontinued it. They discontinued the the white gold, the the, the white gold or the steel, whatever they made it in. Oh yeah. no, they white. made it in platinum. 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 Yeah, platinum. they discontinued that. So now it's just gold, maybe. I don't know. Right. Wow. I didn't. But know yeah, that. that. Oh man. That's my pick. Out of the Daytonas, this is like unwearable and all and, and unaffordable. But the one that just has the diamond bezel, yeah, that one's pretty dirty. Oh, <laughs> like yeah, just yeah, as a yeah, again, yeah. much like a rock star, it's like that watch is ridiculous in a way I I really enjoy. Where you're like, yeah, you're weird rich. Well, you remember the rainbows, right? The yeah, rainbows? The love, yeah, we love yeah. this. Yeah. And I the, love and those. My other favorite was the cheetah, the Steven Tyler. Yeah, yeah. wore the cheetah, the old lady one. I that fantastic. love the cheetah so much they're still out there. it's so oh, yeah, yeah they're like and they're not they're obviously a ridiculous price but yeah. if you're a really rich person yeah i i'm i think once you get above a price echelon it should be a little ridiculous yeah, yeah. otherwise what are we like you have a, a, a pared down austere watch that costs 70 grand like that's silly yeah like while out dude you're trying to get noticed so like go hard <laughs> yeah let's do this like that's the cheetah to me is like Prime. Yeah. That's, if I won the lottery, that's as hard as it goes. the first sign would be me. I buy the cheetah day one. I buy that before I get a house. Before I talk to the lawyer, I buy a cheetah immediately. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be the craziest thing Rolex has ever done, right? Easily. It has to be. It has well, to be. Well, the thing weird about the cheetah, too, was when it came out, they were just sitting in it was like a dog. In Nobody wanted the fucking thing. You yeah. could go into Geary's. Yeah. Uh, or actually, uh, uh, what were they called? Ben Bridge. You could go into a Ben Bridge and be sitting there for yeah. a year or two. Yeah. And they go, we'll give you a good deal on this over here. Like, There's they, no way they made a lot of them. No. Well, it was the same thing with a lot of stuff. Like the Root Beer GMT. When, yeah. when that debuted, nobody wanted that. A brown dial? No. Even like the Paul Newman dial for the Daytona, that was an option. It was a dog. A three-color dial? Yeah. Nobody wanted that no, shit. That, yeah. the, you know? the Newman Daytona was a dog. Yep. The funniest thing about the, the Cheetah is the band is cheetah and it's trash. Yeah. yeah. The oh, band is, is oh, yeah. trash. It shreds. Fast. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like vinyl. Yeah. It's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
But like the really watch is, is so rich. You, you literally, you take it to someone and be like, can you make me a cheetah band that's of quality? Because <laughs> yeah. the band itself is trash. It's the best. It's full rock star. Yeah. It's ridiculous. All right, let's get into it then. Let's start with Tudor then. Tudor has always been a favorite of ours because they always take a full-on risk. They seem to be doing stuff as kind of samples before Rolex puts it out. They did it with the Titanium. Now Rolex has the Titanium Yacht Master. Uh, They're doing it with different color dials and sizes. Uh, My current favorite is only $3,900. It is the... Black Bay 54, which is 37 millimeter, and it's the closest to the Bond sub you could get. And uh, until recently, I didn't even, I was like, what? Who wants that? And then I put it on in Vegas. I called Kevin right away. I was like, holy shit, this is the one out of all the Black Bays. It's really thin, and it's a home run. So, Tudor, they got the GMT came out. Yeah. They finally did the all gold, the Black Bay 58. It used to just have a rubber band, and now they did the gold bracelet, bracelet with yeah. it. Rivet, now, the faux rivet. Yeah, the faux rivet. I did an event for Tudor in Portland, and a, a woman was wearing the green one, and she put this red band on it. I sent oh. a photo to Kevin, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, this watch is fantastic. The reason I like the gold is it's kind of muted and looks bronze. Uh, so they made that, and then they did a regular Black Bay this year in what they call monochrome, and they're, uh, it's kind of a black with it's white. It's all black, right? It's with all, no red accent. Yeah, or, no, none of that, and it, and they have a Jubilee band Yeah, now, it looks good. Which is good. Man. My only qualm with the gold one, and let me, I'm curious what you think. I think if it's a gold watch, the movement has to be mostly gold. So it's got it's a, open case back. Yeah, it's got a sapphire case back. Yeah, I don't know. Is, is there, it's it has steel? The, is there a gold rotor? It's no. got a no. gold rotor. Does it have Does a gold it? rotor? No, no, no. It's well, steel rotor. Like which a that's paddock gold rotor, like solid gold rotor. Or? It ju- it's a steel rotor, which it just looks a little. It's surrounded by gold. Yeah, Let me so look. it looks like I at least would want some gold accents here and there. Which I don't know what that does to the cost. Right. You know, because it is, you, you need solid gold pieces. Well, somebody said something very interesting, and I really agreed on it. They're like, well, uh, am I going to spend 30 on that, or am I going to get the Moonshine Gold Omega Speedmaster, which yeah. is ar- around the same price? And I was like, oh, damn, they're right, because that watch is fucking nuts. I, I kind of... I like Tudor when they're not high end. It's the same way I've always, I yeah. felt about I feel about Panerai. Well, that's that's kind of why everybody loved Panerai initially. Yeah, is because it was their whole historic line. You could get into them for three, four thousand bucks. Yeah, and they, I mean Panerai, as we know, has completely gone away from that. But yeah. yeah, I agree. That's why I like Tudor. A lot of base models. Base models. Yep. I want yeah. what I what I like from what I like from Tudor is base models. That you, where you can pick stuff. Right. So you're like, I like that watch with that, that bracelet, bracelet. On no you know, bracelet. Yeah, yeah. That to me is, especially in that price range, is the fun thing. That's what I. That's why, in my opinion, in the last, because every year we're like, Tudor's pretty good this year again. You are right. It's yeah, silver. It's, it's silver. So in case there's a camera can see it. Yeah. yeah. I'll move it over here. But this is what the fucking watch looks like, and it's just I don't know if. The, I can't. I don't have. I a think it, at this point, with the way Rolex t- treats their customers, yeah. and with what Tudor's level of innovation, Tudor to me is a much better company right now. Yeah. Now they're listening to collectors. As far yeah. as I don't now, you would probably know this better than me. As far as quality of movement goes, yeah. With Tudor's in Tudor's in house versus Rolex in house, is there a huge difference, or is it kind of in the same realm? Well, well they did the Chrono certi- certified one. Yeah, the, yeah. They, yeah, this they, year, they, yeah, they have a chronometer cert. Um, Tudor, you know, initially came into the market using an ETA base, yeah, right. That was modified. Now they're in house movement. They're good. They're based on I forgot the actual caliber designation but it's the same as some of the new brightling movements okay it's like b something is quality wise yeah they're great yeah yeah because i mean it's not like as far as like incredibly interesting movements the sky dweller is probably the only rolex that's innovative right (laughs) outside of that their movements are super reliable very well made like a high but it's not like paddock or Lang or, or right. you know even JLC where it's like no, ultra these, fine everything ultra fine built. really yeah. innovative like in, it like that's why I think Tudor 
you're you're half the price, maybe less, less than half the price, and you're getting a really cool looking watch. That again, like I, we were saying this outside, when I see someone wearing a Tudor, I'm like that person likes watches. Yeah. When I see someone wearing a Rolex, I'm like that person likes money. <laughs> and touch, but now, don't mean, that said, I've had Rolexes in my life. I love them, but they are in Los Angeles increasingly dangerous to wear, and the entry price for yeah. a sport Rolex is wild. Yeah, the barrier to entry is it's much your higher. it's ten grand. Yeah, yeah. like you, they're like, oh well, there it's a well, nine, and, that, and that's that's buying one pre-owned. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. They're, they're still even though. The market has shifted a little bit and prices have gone down still. I mean, for new subs, steel subs, it's still a $2,000 premium yeah. over over retail. Yeah. Of course, yeah. And the you know, interesting thing, too, is uh, I'm dying for the gray market to die out. And, you know, Rolex could easily wipe it out by just making more. See, uh, that's, I, that's the question, right? Are right. we ever going to get back to the days where we can walk into an AD, not me, but, you know, a young professional who's, you know, made something of his life? Yeah. 35 years old. Hey, I, I want to buy a Rolex and walk in like the old days and be like, hi, I want to buy a stainless Submariner. Yeah. Sure. Which, which model would you like, sir? Like, are we ever going to get back there? They're yeah. already making hundreds of thousands of watches. So clearly there's a hung, a very starving market for these watches that they're selling all of them. Essentially all the subs are, yeah, they sell all the subs. They're gone. They're yeah. sold. So I want, I always think it seemed, and I see that design wise, I wonder if, Rolex is much more concerned with the overseas market than America, because well, the way they also approach hair with the uh, high the the metals, precious metals. Yeah, that's what they care about now. Because mm -hmm. you could tell, like, look at the releases. Yeah, today. they made a bunch of shit nobody wants. It was all precious metals. Yeah, you know, and it, and it looked like stuff that sells in Hong Kong. That's what I mean. That yeah. I doesn't. I won. I bet the American market isn't their main concern. It's at not. This they point. said it. They said that yeah. like you know Hong Kong and Europe and. There's people that buy the shit out of yeah. the high end stuff, and the steel is in, you know. Tudor's it, aiming at America more. It's yeah. like cars and motorcycles. It's like, you know, their, their branding tends to be like, it's more tool based. This is a tool watch. Well, so to your point about the, the paddock and the, like the Elonge, Tudor's a lot more robust. Even Rolex is a lot more robust. I mean, those movements are awesome and they're fine and they're detailed, but. When you bump one against they're delicate the, as you, shit. They're very delicate. You bump yeah. one against the wall. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, tuners are it, built to wear. If you yeah. ever know someone who owns like an FP Jorn, they're taking it in every two years, and it's not like it, it didn't break, but some they bu <laughs> they're delicate. Oh, and don't get it twisted. That's a five thousand dollars service. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I you know I tell people about you know, a couple of years ago we we're talking about the fifteen two hundred two, and this guy wrote in. He goes, oh man. Great watch, but the fucking crown fell off my bro. You know, really? he bumped it into something. The crown, you know, ah, oh, shit. And, you know, he said the, the bracelet was falling. Because if you're wearing it like a daily sport watch, right. it just gets trashed. Yeah, it's not that. Those high-end watches, they're to wear kind of. <laughs> Sparingly. So, so yeah. for you guys, the Moonshine Gold Omega or the Gold Tudor? I go I if I'm gonna if I'm going gold I go Omega. Yeah. Over Tudor. I go Tudor because I am a functional watch guy. I not a lot of chronographs. Yeah, yeah. Like it, anything I wear generally I need to be able to like also the Tudor's Dive automatic. In. It's true. You <clears throat> never use the chronograph. No. <laughs> I'm no. wearing one right now. I, I I think I've pushed this button twice. Well, I you don't, don't you don't it. use it because you have to wind the Omega. So if you use it, it just burns the reserve. Yeah, yeah. I and I, I will say I've been wearing this constantly. I do I didn't realize how much I missed winding a watch every day. Yeah. It is nice. Yeah. You wind it before a bed or you wake up, you wind it like when you put it on. But like, yeah, I don't use it's part the of your routine. I don't I'll time the, myself. I tell you the Tudor Gold. If I had the money, and okay, they they retail for thirty. You're probably going to be able to get one for twenty five pretty soon here. Yeah, for twenty five, holy shit, that's a gold watch. Twenty five grand. There's a lot of watches out there that I would get. Yeah, twenty five grand is a really rad sixteen seventy five. Yeah, like yeah. a rad sixteen, maybe oh, with yeah. like papers yeah like a 1675 with that's like the dial is amazing yeah, the, yeah. it's got every like that 25 grand is a yeah. really cool yeah. old rolex well, 55 12 maxi you yeah that a 55 12, yeah. yeah that's what i mean you're when you're in that range and you're down to buy a sport a lot watch, of options there's a lot of cool shit yeah, yeah. you can get an old milgauss in around that price you can get the explorer 2 
You know, yeah. like the old, you know, the the, the, the orange sixteen fifty five, the McQueen, yeah. yeah. The, a real, and by the way, at twenty five, a really good one. Yeah, and get get this too. You get that tutor. I tell everybody this. You're not. It's not an easy resell. It is not an easy resell. That's another reason I like the tutors too. Tutor. A yeah. guy who buys a tutor bu- is buying it to wear for years. Yeah. He's, he's not. Because if you know anything about it. it, you know you're not going to sell it quick right. yeah. if you have to. And you're probably going to lose 500 bucks. Yeah. So you're into it for 3500 You're going to wear it. You're just going to wear it forever, which is what it used to be like when you bought yeah. a sub. Or f- especially with, because I have a small wrist, that's what a Datejust was. You're yeah. like, I'm buying this Datejust. Although in my Datejust is the easiest things to sell in the world. They sell so damn fast. But there's such a good value. You're like, I'm just going to buy it and wear it forever. Yeah, All That's right. what I like about tutors. Let's get into, of course, Rolex, what they dropped. Um, and now, I know a lot of people are disappointed this year because, you know, they didn't really drop it. It's just different colors and dials and stuff like that. But last year, they did some fucking great shit. The Titanium Yacht Master. Have you what, seen one? Have you held I've one yet? I've still not seen one yet. My buddy got one, said nope. it weighs an ounce. Like, you don't even know it's on your wrist. I, I want one so bad. I've never even seen a dummy. They have dummies now in the stores. Yep. They don't even have a dummy of that yet. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, which I haven't seen yet. So they discontinued the mill gas last year. No way are they going to bring out some new mill gas this year. But last year, you got the new uh, refacing of the Daytona. And uh, that was a whole new watch. I like the new bezel. Yeah. I prefer it. Uh, and, but do you like, now that it's been a year, the skinnier sub dials? Yeah. No, those don't bother me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kevin and I are like, I'm on the fence. Sometimes I see it. I do think that in the newer watch, the black finally looks better than the white for me. Which what I, I really like about the, it's on that, the Le Mans Daytona, oh. the way the bezel sits in side yeah. of the metal ridge yeah it's flat because that is the one thing about when their bezels stick up i don't love yeah. it looks just too chunky it doesn't feel right to me well it's kind of a nod to like the 6263 like with the big yeah. bezel. Yeah. yeah yeah it sits inside mm-hmm. that's so, what i like about the tudor gmt it looks like bakelite yeah looks like old bakelite the new one yeah the new one yeah i like it too because it's, it's secondly burgundy they're going to like it's burgundy and black yeah. not red well, it looks like the 6542 when they're, because that's yeah, how those bezels old. end up looking. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So everybody thought they were going to do a Coke. Coke. Yeah. Everybody. Every year they think it's a Coke. We got this one guy we know. He's always texting. It's going to be a Coke. <laughs> it's going to be a Coke. It's I mean, like, the Photoshop internet guys were making Coke bezels for months. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And what they did instead was gave us a half faded gray. Right. <laughs> you yeah. lazy bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really weird because. Someone you, left a black bezel outside yeah, and then half a shadow. Part of it. Yeah. Part of it. It was, it was on the dash. And somebody was like, well, fuck it. I mean, if they would have went all blue, if they would have actually done the blueberry, a blueberry? that would have oh, murdered. No, mind boggler. Yeah. Straight up. Mind boggler. If I had to pick a G, if you were like, you can only have one GMT, uh, blueberry. Yeah. Yeah. The blueberry, Ralph Lauren has one. Yeah. They are, that guy's that is got a, a hell of a collection. That is about as cool a watch as you Especially can get. Especially with the, uh, like, the... The myth of it is it the real? Allure, yeah. yeah, the allure is like, is it real? When did they make those? Yeah, For who? They, yeah. yeah, all of that. Dude, so the blueberry is it would what's be fucking up. crazy. And don't get me wrong, they cost a grip, yeah. but they're not like they're like thirty five, forty grand. Yeah. But how do you prove that it's a the real proof blue? Is so yeah. I can discern inserts. What? They're, they're, the inserts do have a <laughs> he tell. He said mysterious. Oh, yeah? yeah, they have a tell. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Wow. What's real the, quick. Is real the quick. tell font? Uh, it's two things. It's font, and it's also when you look at the triangle at twelve. Yeah, there's like it's a triangle and a triangle. It's like superimposed, and you have to look under magnification to see it. And wow, yeah, there is a tell. That's good to know then. Yeah, know your fonts, people. Mm-hmm. Typeface so, matters. They Serif, dropped they Serif. dropped a GMT with a gray and black, but it is our favorite GMT uh, for a stalker. Before that, it's got the green font, the green hand. Yeah. And, uh, and Jubilee bracelet, which, Ooh. I mean, that's uh, all anyone wants is the black bezel on a Jubilee. So this is pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the, ju- the new Jubilee bracelet rips. 
It's well, a wait, really good bracelet. Plus, we just swap the bezel. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. you can buy it and just swap it and go, I got the that black. That bezel's 1500 bucks. Yeah. Come on. I got a couple in <laughs> <laughs> They're $1,500. Yeah. Bucks. Okay, so they dropped that um, that GMT. That was their steel, and that's all they gave you, steel. Then they did the that 1908 that we loved. They did it in platinum, and it looks like the day date 40 Platinum, yeah. you know, I mean, this is the, the it's just beautiful. The blue dial is pretty. The Russell Peters, yeah. you know. You know, I, I will I, say, I, I forgot to say this, the G, the new GMT is yeah. the Seiko 5. The Seiko 5 GMT automatic is black and gray. Yeah. They've been making it no, for you're right. five yeah. years. Oh, yeah. Same time. It's just, you're right. it's Seiko, same bracelet. It's a Jubilee, it's the Seiko 5. Yeah. Like oh. they, I don't they essentially just ripped off the Seiko 5. So back to the day dates. I forgot. I don't know if it's Rose, but it has uh, like a vignette dial, like a, like a Les Paul. Right. That looks nice. Oh, that well, I like, yeah. It, did they do it for the, it was like a, for the Grammys or some shit? I don't know. It came, no, it came out. What, it, was, it, was it was for something. Oscars or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like that. Because uh, uh, Rolex does like a film thing. Right. Oh, yeah. They do like, a, you know, Scorsese has one and they do a film thing. So I think it came out with the Oscars. Okay. I, I, li- I like their motif dials. Yeah. Their motif dials are fun. I, I mean, like the bubble that. one rips. I like that one that's like turquoise and looks like lightning struck it. Yeah. What is that? It's a turquoise dial with like like lightning. It's like cracked. Yeah. It looks like it's like mineral. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they did a giant full gold deep sea, which is first of all, I've got to weigh a so hundred pounds. I want. Yeah. I would watch a documentary about who's buying this. You know, who's I buying can tell it. you. I don't know who's yeah, buying it. yeah, yeah. I mean, we know who's buying right. it, right? But also, Sylvester Stallone will be wearing. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, they'll be like, hey, look at this. You know, I don't. I just. I'll. Ne- you never see one. You never see one. Anyone wearing one? Yeah. Like, I mean, that is. Tool watch. It was yeah. built for saturation dives. Yeah, set dives. It's, it's How big a, is it? It's a complete it's giant. Gimmick. It's. I think it's forty. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. No fucking technical diver is wearing a solid it's, gold. No divers wearing anything it's that's 40, not digital. It's forty-four millimeters. You wear a steel watch I, when you dive. I, I dive with my my dive computer on my left wrist, uh-huh. and I mean it's more just for nostalgia than anything else. But I'll I'll dive with a with a, a watch on my right wrist. It's well forty-four watched. millimeters. Either Z-driller? either a Seiko seven S two six. Okay. Or uh, my sixteen eight hundred, which is in that box. That the, the you six, throw a sixteen eight hundred on and go in the ocean. The sixteen eight hundred in that box has probably logged close to fifty dives, and, and I mean it's been well over hundred feet many times. Have you had yeah, corrosion Cabo, in it? Cancun, um, the cathedrals in Maui. Is it a matte dial or Ma- it's matte dial? And no, and you haven't had any water problems in it, dude. I do this for a living. Yeah, but <laughs> how many times have you had to open it up and and? I've well, I, I none. I when I so the trick to keeping watches, especially steel watches, safe when you're in and around salt water, yeah, uh-huh. is the same thing you do with dive gear. So when you're when you're done diving, you know, you rinse out your wetsuit, everything else. So I take my dive computer off my wrist, my watch off my wrist, and I put them in like a Tupperware full of warm water and uh-huh. just let them soak because. The reason why those things get corroded and get porosity in there is because salt water doesn't get into the watch, but all the ceiling surfaces in around your gas stick, under your bezel, salt water creeps in there and it has no way to get out of there. So yeah, just let them soak in, in some warm water for five, 10 minutes and then wipe them off with, you know, microfiber cloth or whatever. And yeah, I, mean, I had a 16, I sold it to Steve and easy. I saw a guy, <laughs> so listen, wears it. I saw a guy who had the Kermit and, uh, Philippe had it mm-hmm. and, the guy surfed in Malibu every day for like 10 years. It, the bezel was the craziest color i have ever seen. That's man. what I love. It was amazing. It was green brown. See, that's what I mean. Like a watch that you buy and you wear it. I and love those, dude. Yeah. They turn into something. If you do it like uh, if you got a tutor strap, if you're 30 years old, you buy a tutor, you strap it on your fucking wrist and you wear it for 20 years. In 20 years, that watch is going to look so unique. You're literally gonna have the only one like it on the planet because yep. it's liter- It'll be a, it's basically attached to your lifestyle. So the bezel is gonna be faded in reference to whatever you do, whatever it is your life is will inform that watch. Yep. That's why like, <laughs> see you see a pristine watch of someone, you're like you're a dork. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And now they did a um, they did a new Sky Dweller <laughs> this year. Lo- I mean, I love the Sky Dwellers, but they're. 
a, a, a tough watch to wear. They're giant. Yeah. They're huge. Yeah, yeah, they're huge. And also, yeah. they're, they're heavy. They've kind of become hip hoppy bling. Very much so. So the street is looking to steal these. Well, my favorite thing is like the whole, I, the whole, all the technology behind that watch is built into the bezel, right? Yeah. Right. You see, you constantly see them. People rip the bezel off, and they just have this huge non-functional diamond bezel. I'm like, but uh, but how do mind. you? But it's how do you? It doesn't matter. <laughs> they, they, they replace the bezel oh, with yeah. diamond. Oh, oh yeah. wow! And it becomes non-functional. Yeah. It's, is okay. Yeah. Do they still make a steel sky dweller? Oh, absolutely. I believe so yeah. yeah the what green, is it? Cost? Blue dial. Yeah. What's it cost? Sixteen now. Okay. Yeah. They were okay. fourteen nine. They see. That is that makes the price of that sort of makes sense. And right. they come with a Jubilee band now. Yeah, because like the technology in that watch is actually pretty damn interesting. Yeah, yeah. I talked got, to the watch maker at Wanna Buy a Watch, and he was like, "I want to open one up so bad." Oh my god, because he's got, so curious. I've got the tech manual for it for the, the movie. That's what he, he was like. I want the tech manual. We've got it. It's <laughs> really dude. They're cool. There's a lot of technology yeah, it's built cool. in there. Yeah. yeah, that's what I wish Rolex flexed a little more. That they were just like, no, this sky driller is why for them. That's it's that's the most interesting thing they've done, like technology wise, in my yeah. opinion. So in like, I wish time. I wish it was more about that with them. But the fact that you have to wind it with the bezel means it'll always have to be fluted. Which right. that watch, if the bezel was smooth, would look amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but you wouldn't be able to wind it. I don't know if you guys heard they recently registered a patent for uh, the name Land Dweller. For what? what? Rolex did Land Dweller. Land dweller. So Land dweller. I don't know when we'll see it or if we'll see it, but they did register the patent. My wow. fantasy for Rolex yeah. is to make a new entry level watch. That like a Rolex field watch. Dude, like the Tudor Ranger. It's the Tudor Ranger. Hell it yes. should be four thousand dollars. But the Explorer one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because yeah. they it, I, I think it should be like literally a watch for like businessmen, business yeah. people, right? It's 37 millimeters, stainless steel, comes on a strap. It's not the oyster-shaped case. It's shaped like the 1908, but smaller. And it's just like, this is the entry-level Rolex. Like, congratulations, you're an adult. Well, that's what Cellini used to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Isn't it interesting how radical Rolex was last year? You're thinking about the platinum puzzle dial, the ce uh, ce uh, celebration dial with the balloons, you know, the colors of the on the oyster the uh, mint sky dweller, the Le Mans 100 year Daytona, the full redo of the uh, Daytona, the titanium yacht man. I mean, they went crazy last year. And this year is kind of like, here you go. Well, the yeah. market is very different. Yeah. And they may, I wouldn't right. be surprised if they had others, they have a lot of stuff in the pipeline. And they're just like, let's not do it now because the market is trash. Right. Yeah. Like every, all the stories about Rolex are just like, I mean, you, that thing you sent me today, like, there's so many that you can get below retail now, right. which has been unheard of for the last almost decade. Yeah, yeah, pretty and wild, And so I right? think they're probably holding on to throwing out a bunch of new stuff when no one's going to be buying it anyways. Right. The mar we're in a soft market for luxury goods for probably the next year or two. So I, would, I wouldn't be surprised they're just sitting on a bunch of stuff. All right. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Paddock, of course, is always radical. Uh, they did a platinum perpetual calendar now in salmon, which is probably one of the most beautiful. Just Are those markers black? Uh, let me see. Can you I see? can't really tell because the, 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 the hands are, yeah, they're black. Anything the markers salmon? and hands are black, which Anything I think salmon. is a little strange. Look are at they that. black or are they like heat blued? I'm saying. They don't look blue. They look like matte black. Oh uh, yeah, let's just take a look at it. Which is a little. I would love to see it in person because that's a little for a watch like that. Yeah, they're black enamel. You can tell because the hands have like a raised kind of. Oh, they're texture. enamel. Yeah, they're enamel. So they'd be a little shiny. Now let me I ask you so. this, Bo. What is the? Let me see that real mm -hmm, quick. Mm -hmm. What is the three down there? Because it's not the month. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't. Let I don't. See. Oh. Yeah, it's not or the no, month. Because it has 18 at the top, so it's not day. And, yeah, and it's got March on the top, too. So I can't figure out what that is. I mean, I was going to say phase of the moon, but it's got a moon phase that indicates that. So yeah. What the hell does the three mean? I don't know. It, somebody will know. If you do know, please. Maybe, could it yeah. be power reserve? <clears throat> no. You got three days left. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I don't a perpetual know. calendar. It's pretty wild. Wait, oh, hold on, hold on. So if it's a perpetual calendar... And it's and then across from it is just you know a a a, a, a recessed hole that's just black. So the years on there, right? Years at the top. Yep. 
No, the year's not. It's oh, not. the year's it's not the, at the top. Is it the year? No, it's not the year. So if it's perpetual calendar, it should be day, month, and year. This well, is the three of the year? It, well, look, it's got Saturday, 18th of March. Okay, there's no year, but year. It wouldn't be the year. They would have put a four. Yeah, yeah it would have been a four. So I don't know, but if anybody knows, uh, hit me up and let me know what that <laughs> like is. And it is an incredible watch. You can find out for $180,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Super I, affordable. And I said this before. <laughs> um, I'm going to say something controversial. Yeah. That dial feels a little too drawn in the computer. Yeah. What I My feeling towards modern Patek dials, they lack a skosh of poetry. There's, there's, there's a human proportion to your, your eye. There's, there's yeah. the human eye proportion versus perfectly symmetrical proportion. And they're not the same thing. And that looks like perfect computer proportion as opposed to human eye proportion. Well, also, I don't know if this is the real watch. Also, yeah. yeah, the, prob- yeah, yeah, yeah. the problem with when they release these things yeah. is it's a perfectly worked over Photoshop yeah, right, pr- right. Like photo. You don't really know what the watch looks yeah. like. I will tell you this, though. When they came out with that one... That look, what's uh, Shinola? They had that racing looking one last year with the gritty dial. Mm -hmm. I saw that in person. I was like, well, that looks like a Shinola. I'm not knocking Shinola, but I don't want my paddock to look like Shinola. Yeah. It was had the racing dial. Remember yeah, it was that, that thing sucked. Yeah, it sucked. That thing sucks. But <laughs> I'll tell you what didn't suck. They made a new um, travel time. Travel right? time. Yeah. It's gray and it's uh, white gold, which is interesting, right? It's like at that price point, what's the difference? Yeah, right. You're but, already paying so much money, so it may as well be white gold. But the travel time is probably the ultimate watch that they make. And this color combo is fantastic. It's gray with a gray band, which, you know, the bands will be uh, $8,000 in oh, yeah. the aftermarket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, here it is right here. <laughs> It is it is fire. Deal cocaine aftermarket right. Patek. Uh, yeah. There it is. I mean so, that thing's rad looking. It is, man. That dial's fun to look at. That dial to be fair. Like all the little all the little things all the lines and stuff, that dial's a lot of fun to look at. Look at that. You don't get bored looking at that dial. And every time you look down you go, God, I am rich. Yeah, I like it. Let yeah, me, right? Is there a difference, Bo a white gold case versus a steel case as far as like how, like durability as far as like the movement and stuff. Like is white because white gold gold softer, right? Super yeah. soft. So way softer. It's gonna get scratched up easier, dinged easier, and then stainless steel is gonna absorb impact a lot better than gold, and yeah. less energy is gonna be transferred into the movement because yeah. with a steel case, I've seen a lot of gold cases, white gold, yellow gold, rose gold, that have like torqued. Yeah. And a lot of when you bang that watch, a lot more energy is transferred into the movement as opposed to a steel case that stays very rigid. What about moisture getting in? Is white same, gold same? Yeah. yeah. Is is moisture getting in really just down to the seals and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now what is this uh I don't know. What is it? Chopard? Sh- how do you Chopard. Say it? Chopard. Yeah. I don't I I haven't seen their collection. But I get this, down with Chopard. They're classy. This is cool, <laughs> man. Part of Swatch Group, I believe. Yeah, they are. Did you guys see this one? It's fucking great. It's a skeleton. No, Chopard are beautiful. Yeah, like, what, it, now I don't know them. They're they've been around a long time. They're 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 mostly just like beautiful dress watches. Right. So when I look at that, I see a hublot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I okay. mean, the okay. way every watch company had to make their AP fifteen two hundred two ripoff and not Nautilus ripoff is still a bummer. It yeah. continues to be a bummer. Well, this is a straight up paddock that uh, yeah. John Mayer told me to get. Uh, it's a straight up same as the paddock, uh, same movement. No, the oh. same look, exact. Chopard to me is similar to like Piaget. Where yeah. it's a very beautiful high end watch nice. that only wealthy people know about, but like when you see one on someone, you're like, oh, you you like either that was a wild gift, it's a gentleman's watch. Yeah, it's yeah. a very high end watch. Look where, at the band it comes with. 
pretty pretty wild, right? I, the stitch looks so stupid. It's like crazy. You're, you're gonna hit me for probably that's probably twenty eight grand. I gotta look at a fucking stitch. You couldn't even murder a crocodile. Like you're that late. That's yeah. the thing. Who are you? Who's that for? Yeah. Because yeah. that's like you got the rugged band yeah. with the fucking white gold. That's a Speedmaster band. What are we yeah. doing here, buddy? Yeah, yeah. I can make that band. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Oh, yeah. You could make it at home. They're so con- some of these some of these people. I would love to just sit in meetings. Yeah. I would love to just sit in the the R and D meetings and just be like, "What are you fucking people talking about?" Well, I don't know. the we, rubber band on the da- on the Daytona with the diamonds. If you gave me a gold watch with a rubber band right. that wasn't a Patek Nautilus, I'd be like, "How much cocaine did you do today? Are you are you being ridiculous?" I love- I mean, I hate rubber bands. I hate them. I hate them so. Uh, no, okay. I like a diving one, like a normal one, like but a tropic the, strap. Yeah, like yeah. the but these new shaped rubber ones, I think they look like shit. So I love this. What is it? Uh, what Mo- is it? Moser, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That, you know, that's like Chad and those guys. They got they sell that brand. You yeah. Know? I but I just think uh, you got to get the strap right. I look right, at that. Dude. I see Richard Mule. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, that's the that's the thing at the end. Yeah, it at is, the end of the day, but it's yeah. it's far better than a Richard. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I was at this. Uh, I mean, I I'm not. I know I'm a, like we're pretty alone this, but I think Richard Mills look like shit. They're toys. I think it looks like a, a G Shock had sex with yeah. a Transformer. Uh, congrat every well, and the also, only it's dis- a Frank Mueller. The only you know? discussion around them is the price, and when right. the only discru- discussion around something is the price, you've lost me. Yeah. I was at an event and a guy was wearing one. And uh, this other guy came over. He just got it. He was fired up. And, and he goes, get rid of that toy. <laughs> just straight to his face, yeah. dude. I was like, whoa. I did watch a video where Pharrell has a Richard Mill that's like ultra thin. Like it's their thin. Like yeah. that one you sent me, the other company. I forget the company. But it's super. That was interesting to me. Because Richard Mill does really interesting technical stuff. The materials is because yeah. he came from F1. And so yeah. all the carbon and the Kevlar. And, it's fascinating, but yeah. that's not what you hear about. You right. only hear about the price. price. I wish yeah. it was more about, because this guy's doing interesting stuff. Yeah, it's innovative. It I is, bet he's but, a little bummed on the discussion where he's like, yeah. you guys realize I'm like a fucking scientist over here? And all you want to talk about is, heard that one's 280. Right. But you can get it for 310. You're like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up, nerd. What makes me sad again is the same thing we were talking about with like a lot of the upper echelon brands. Is they're just delicate, dude. Those things they're delicate. Yeah, they really yeah. are. They're not hard use watches. They're not tool watches. Yeah. It's Fashion. the same it's the same thing you hear about with like certain cars. Yeah. You get of course. like yeah, you get a Lamborghini, but dude, you yeah. can drive it like three times and you got to it's it's a yeah, you need a new drive shaft. It's gonna yeah, be twenty five grand. It's a it's an actively punishing relationship. Tires are ten grand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what? Jesus. Vacheron didn't do the steel two two two, which we know that they're not going to do that for a while at least. They've got a hit with the gold one. It's impossible to get. But their overseas came out with a green dial this year, and oh. it is fucking fire. Everybody's going green. I know. Everybody's going green. It's I a, love green. Green's a great yeah. a Green's a great color. It's the, my favorite. I mean, not it's not the dial, but my favorite ro- uh, modern Rolex is the Kermit. Yeah. Well, check that thing's out, great looking. Check out the Vacheron green, man. They really nailed it because, uh, you know, they were known for that blue. Um, yeah. and, and we recently saw a, a comedian friend of ours wearing one and we we're like, Oh, I they, was impressed. Yeah. They're slow. Like, so I, I was like, did he get a, vo-? I was like, that's a big boy watch. Yeah. That's yeah, a that, big boy that you don't, you, that's not a spur of the moment purchase. That's a big boy price. That means you're doing pretty damn well. And you thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's cool too, was he probably went like, Hey, I don't want to wear what these peasants are wearing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what's something that is completely. Also, Rolex what? has become the, if you're a comedian that's performing in stadiums. It's like default. Yeah. They're all getting very high end Rolexes. So yeah. I think he was like, nah, everyone has that. Yeah. I'll tell you about the, I really, really enjoy working on these cases. The Vacheron? Really? Oh yeah. 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 You it's work on the cases? Yeah, the overseas, yeah. What do you like about it? Of, just just the angles and, and the geometry of them and the way um, the two-piece bezel and it's all flat surfaces. So, like, there's no, like, everything's done on, on the machine. Do you like the watch? Yeah. I do, oh, too. Oh, I love an overseas, There yeah. was something, there's something crazy about it. When I put it on, though, I know it's high-end and I know it's, like, very well made, but it... Um, it still feels a little 
I don't know, like fake, you Did know, it feel like, light? size wise. Yeah. Like, is weight? it the weight? No, it's just, so, yeah, it's like the case and the body feel like, what is this? You know? I mean, when you look at that design, it's beautiful. They're crazy. There's a lot going on here. The, yeah. And those bracelets break down into all individual links. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Every, it completely like, wow. I mean, I, that's I, how I can I show can you spot. a picture. Like when I work on those, it's literally like the links are all set right. out and numbered. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, that's how you can spot one. It's because the middle links are, us, are are smaller in the middle. You can tell the Vacheron from far away. I would be afraid to get that because then the guy calls and goes, you got the 222. And you're like, oh, because the 222 is so 70s. I mean, you probably have to buy this one to get right, that Right, right. Yeah. But man, that's a great watch. It's cool. And like when I see them on somebody, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like you, you went there. Like yeah. it's it because you thought about this. You're not going to get the attention of a 15202 or a 5402. Right, but right. For people that really know watches, is like, oh, overseas chrono, nice. And also, if those three were available all the time, would would the other ones not be as hot? You know, because right. look at the fifteen two or two satin stores for years. The fifty seven eleven, oh, the aqua. No one want, It's so yeah. interesting the way no one wanted them. Yeah, no one wanted nine them. grand yep. all day. And then yeah. They were nine grand yeah. all day up until yeah. uh, ten years ago. What'd you bring, my man? I brought some stuff. Um, I don't know. I've been interested in in buying more transitional stuff, uh-huh. you know, either beginning of an era or end of an era. So right. brought a couple things, got, and then the, I brought I brought some Seikos because Seikos are cool and everybody loves Seikos. Seikos. Grand Seikos or regular? No, Seikos? no, old. Everything's vintage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now Grand Seiko is another company that I've constantly been wanting to get into. But it's another thing. When I get it, I'm, it's almost there to me. But it's not like, yeah, this is it. I mean, I've I've gone in like ten times now to the yeah. boutique, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go. I tell Kev, I'm gonna go. Look. They got the pink fucking dial one. It's cool. making cool stuff. I've they gotten are. many texts like, going tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> and then I go in. and I'm like, ah. it's it's interesting how long because it is still an exp- again. Everyone listening, no one at this table is rich. So yeah. we have to think about these purchases for a while. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's a big thing. Like I think about if I'm going to spend more than a thousand dollars on anything that's not necessary, I think about it for years. Yeah. Also, it's not a good parachute. It's right. hard to hard. move. This, uh, hard you're to not going to you're not going to flip a Grand Seiko fast at no. all. So, so let's see what you, you got to really think about it. The uh, one thing I will say about Grand Seiko, though, in terms of like refinement and. Yeah. and the level of detail on individual Those components, dials. Yeah. Like dials, indices, and the accuracy, hands. dude. Oh yeah, that's yeah. me. See, I, right. I, I, I'm an accuracy person. But I care no, about accuracy. But no loom is a trip to me. I don't care no, about loom. Well, Seiko's got the best loom in the world. Like but, for their sport models, it's new. But Grand Seiko has no loom. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I don't like when I. You know what looks weird to me on like a what uh, essentially a watch that has a beautiful dial like a Grand Seiko. Yeah, loom looks weird. Because it's like neon against like this perfect pink platinum inlay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of a non sequitur. All right, here we go. Right, cool dig, case, by the way. Yeah. Dig sassy. in there, grab something, and, and okay. uh, we'll, uh, you'll see the 1600. That's got lots of dyes. I want the orange dial. Okay, let's look at that. So you know what that is, right, Kev? I don't. So there's the black and the orange. That's the, the H558. That's the Arnie. That's okay. what uh, Schwarzenegger wore in Commando. In Commando. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's good. Wow. Let's see if you guys can see that. So the orange one was sold to the Japanese market only. It okay. wasn't here on U.S. shores. And what's oh, that wow. cost? The black one. Let me guess. They're they're not expensive. Eighteen hundred. No, way less. Really? Eight yeah. For a nice for a nice example, that's clean and all original. Because I always want to try to find an original. What's the one called from Alien that she wore? The Ripley wore. Yeah. It's got a, it was Italian name. The guy who designed his name's like Freccione or something yeah, I'm like not that. Sure. But their the originals there's like none. Okay. And they started like you occasionally see an original one on eBay and they started like fifteen hundred. So okay. I would imagine this is. But yeah, is like a about, good clean example of those, five hundred to a thousand bucks. Oh, really? oh wow. Yeah. Okay. I like the plan I like the one without the orange too. Yeah, it's that's, a nice that's, size. That, that's the one that, that he actually wore. Okay. Not the, the Schwarzenegger? Watch, yeah. Oh wow. What is that? The H five five eight. And what year is this? Eighty eighty one. Eighty eighty one. And did you buy it on eBay? No, where did I get that? That I actually bought um, one of um, one of my good friends and one of the watchmakers that work for us over at LAWW. Yeah, uh, guy by the name of Dalton Toledo. This uh, bull chrono is sexy. What is that? Oh, the bull head. Bull yeah. head chrono. Yeah, that thing's great. Whoa, brown, that brown dial is. Look nice. at look at the case, Dean. Like really, the case look at is it. so yeah. wild. Wow, look at that thing, man, and that root beer dial. 
case that, is higher on one side than the other. And again, that's the JDM version because it's it's marked speed timer. Uh, um, can you see that? Oh, cool. But look at the shape of the case. Yeah, it's pretty fucking crazy. That uh, these are rad. Yeah, I yeah. love that watch. I had one, sold it, and then got another one. Maybe I don't know. I went to want to buy a watch ago. once, and I was like, "Do you guys have Seikos?" And he was like, "Ah, oh, there's a box of them." And he uh, took out a box. There was like 10 of these. And he was whoa. like, I don't know what they're worth. I should have bought the whole box. Is Ken <laughs> still in the shop pretty often? Sometimes, yeah. I haven't seen him in a while. All right, so. I think uh, since they moved, he's there a little more. Okay. And then we got a couple turtle. Turtles are, I mean, these are great. And these, yeah. these to me keep going up. Oh, yeah. They're getting harder and harder to find because they used to be. So I think in this, so that's the 6105. Wow. I love the turtle. That's what uh, Sheen wore in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That, so they reissued one. Yes. It was called The uh -huh. Willard. And I got it. It was yeah, like I remember you getting bucks. it. Yeah. yeah, it just fit on my wrist wrong. It yeah. just kept sitting over here. And I was like, I loved it. I was like, I got to have this. It was green. But like these are 45 millimeters or something. But they wear a lot smaller. Yeah, they wear a they lot wear smaller. They wear way smaller. Although this one to me, because the bracelet is so much wider, wears a lot better. So the 6105s and 6309s, like I've got handfuls of both of those. Of this I, one? I, yeah, I started buying those when no one cared. But because yeah. these now, I don't see for at least they're, they're I never see them for under a thousand. Yeah, there. Then some they go up to seventeen hundred. But I think this is a bulletproof. Watch. So much watch for the money. Yeah, and it's cool. Yeah, this is cool. Is that Apocalypse Now also? No, that's the six three zero nine. Um, what's his name wore that in the Abyss? Oh, uh, oh that's Billy good. Billy Bob Thornton famously wore one in a bunch of different movies. That's wow. Cool. But yeah, I because on the Sheen picture it has that narrow. Band, you can see yeah, there's yeah. pictures of it from of the movie. Yeah, that's a cool watch. I love that one. These are cool. The reissue killed, it yeah. just didn't fit my wrist right. The man. black reissue it. one's rad. Yeah, yeah, I like it. They made uh, a black one and what a green one. The green, yeah. green's yeah. the one I got. Turtles yeah. are rad, like that to the me. Turtles. That's a great value. And again, when I see someone wearing that, I'm like, yeah. that person really likes watches and wants to appeal to other yeah, watches. Vintage people. diver for under a thousand bucks, yeah. you know. What here do you got we, here we have a sixteen eight hundred. So yeah, that's that's my sixteen. The rent is that's, easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, with the ghost bezel, yeah. killer. So I bought that watch. Probably, I bought a ghost bezel from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe ten years ago, that watch is box. It's papers. It's hang really? tag. Really? It's original sales receipt for twelve hundred bucks from nineteen eighty seven. Wow. It's like the fullest of fullest package. How these long are, ago these did you buy it? Maybe ten years ago. Wow. Because if you've owned a sixteen eighty, which I did a long time ago, that crystal is wild. What's it, it worth? It's up so high. I don't know. These um, 16? Are, I would say between twelve and fifteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see him thirteen five. Yeah, it, but man, that, but he's box got, and papers. But he's I think it's more like and fourteen. Hang tank. And it's a weird, it's a weird watch because it's new movement, new case, sapphire crystal. But for those first three years, from I, I think like eighty to eighty three, yeah, they had the matte tritium dial before yeah. they went to gloss. Is it the yeah. thirty thirty five movement? Uh huh. Yeah. The matte dial is so bizarre because it just looks it. like. Yeah, I'm a. I'm but a, you get a flat crystal. Yeah. yeah, which is why I like my this Mark II because they get the Speedmaster dial with the flat crystal. Mm -hmm. This fifty five thirteen is the shit. That's eighties fifty five thirteen. Same thing. That's an end of an era. So yeah. that's eighty seven. That's the Ooh, very last. very very last year. The very next year it was discontinued and it was one four zero six. I had one of those. This these, is fun. These wear. Th yeah, you want to talk watch. a watch that looks perfectly Let me try classic. It on. That watch is the absolute shit. I love Look that watch. at the crystal. It's the bubble one. I forgot all about but it. That. Not that. That's the last sport watch uh -huh. Rolex ever made with an acrylic crystal. And they won't replace the bubble crystal anymore. They don't make them, I guess. So people started making them. Do well, you make them? No, I don't make them. Someone makes them. Um, one Greg, of like the big. Greg Petronzi. Okay. Uh, shout out to Greg Petronzi, uh, True Patina. He, uh, yeah, yeah, True Patina. Yeah, he's making reproduction domes. He's, yeah. He makes a 19, Look at that a thing, 38. Dude. It's so good. This is a 10 with the faded yeah. No, no, markers. it's a 10. And the markers yeah. are small. What's this run for? Those are 10. Same thing, yeah, 10, 10 to 11. 12. And hey, it's, it's, the dial's got great patina, and most of those, oh, I love those, for some reason, whoever, whatever paint Rolex was using, whatever manufacturer was doing the dials back then, yeah. most of those end up being spider dials. Right. I'm not a yeah, spider yeah, dial yeah. guy. I don't either. So that one's like... But now, that's true. You see so many of those spider dials. That's plastic. Mm -hmm. The dome. Yeah. Yeah, right. But I that 
I wish that's one I wish I would have held on to because it just it feel it's weird because it's not like it's smaller really, dude. That thing, but is, it wears smaller. It wears like yeah. it's thirty nine. No, oh, they're light. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. my Fast. favorite one of so the like, show. That and the sixteen eight hundred are complete opposites because uh. that's got new dial, old crystal, the six and old this case, old. old movement. Yeah, because right. it's a fifteen thirty. Yeah, the sixteen eight hundred. Old dial, new case, new crystal. Kind of like the era dial era where they, some of them had the new movement. Right. That was crazy. But just think about how how little there is on this dial. Yeah. Look at it. Like there's not, yeah. every oh. other dial has other shit on yep. it. The markers Two lines are of huge. text, yeah. It's so, everything's so small. What year it's, is it? 87. 87. No, those are, I love, the, and dude, put that on a NATO. Mm -hmm. Those look great on everything. I wear, I, that watch is a home run to me. I wear it on a NATO a lot of the time, or um, I like doing it with uh, like a natural stitched leather strap. Sure. That kind of matches the. Wow. Wow. the 50, wow. This to me is like, if this is such a great vintage value to yeah. me. Yeah. That thing's, first of all, that watch knocks me out, man. Although, right now, to be honest, if you want, if you have between 10 and 20 grand, it's such a good time to buy vintage There's Rolexes. There's a lot out there, yeah. Because yeah. the new buyer, the young generation of people who want Rolexes don't want the old ones. Yeah. Which I find mind-boggling because <laughs> they're such good value instead of going new. What's ha missing out of there is a, uh, a 16700. Oh, uh, yeah. It was the very first Sapphire GMT. Oh, wow. I'm still kind of yeah, on the yeah, lookout yeah. for one of those. Yeah. Like a real clean, nice one. Those are a good transition, too, yeah. Well, the one I keep One of saying, my favorites. Yeah. One of my favorites. Now, uh, Bo turned me on to this, and a lot of people ask me, like, hey, what watch would you get for under $1,000? And there's no watch I would get other than this right here, and it's the Tornick Ravel. This watch and rips. It, it comes with this cool case. <laughs> Look at these Gertie. These old school kind of <laughs> likes it. military fucking forms. It gives you a couple different bands. The bands are nice, too. The, the good bands quality. are nice. I went with the date one. The date is between 4 and 5 o'clock. Gertie looks so bored. It's right. so funny. <laughs> Comfy, though. <laughs> Comfy yet bored. And, man. What an interesting story behind that watch. Yeah, let's get into that because it, it, they were the the guy was uh, took the contract from uh, the military, and then they said they have to be made in America. Well, so, that the, the original. The original, yeah, original TR-900, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So it was yeah it was uh, it was basically a Blanc Pain Fifty Fathoms yeah. that was rebranded and made by the Rayville family here in the U.S. because of uh, the Barry Agreement. Things that are that issued to our military have to be made here. Right. So, but then it was defunct for you know the, supposedly the original TR nine hundred. There's like they say like fifteen hundred in existence. Wow. wow. Which is a pretty low number. Super low. And then it at somehow some way I don't know how uh, Bill Yao. Yeah. Of uh, Mark II fame, yeah, bought the rights to the name Tornick Rayville. Yep, years ago, a long time ago, and then he made like a prototype, which was uh, he had a watch called the Stingray, which was a lot like the Fifty Fathoms. You guys probably remember it. He made a prototype uh, Tornick Rayville, super limited production. This was probably ten years ago. Not many of them in circulation, and then it was just gone. But he had the rights to the name, and then I don't know, a couple years ago, yeah, he uh, released that, this, and that thing is a value. I man. mean, I got on the list and paid full price for mine. Same here. I just wanted Same it. Air. Yeah, and also he makes them. It's pre-order, so you pay half, mm -hmm. and then about eight months later, you pay the other half, and they ship it. Yep. And people are like, I don't want to wait that long. It's like, believe me, you just forget about it. Yeah. And one day it comes, and yeah. it's five hundred bucks. Yeah. And yeah. when it comes, it's. One of the best watches of all fucking time for the money. Yep. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's such a nice... The loom is nuclear. The oh, case is great. It's bulletproof. Yeah, yeah it's got bulletproof blasted. movement. Yeah. Yeah. The Man. only military watch I have... I have the Obama Graph. Yeah. That you had... A friend of mine got it for me from the Secret Service store. Really? You have to... Because the, the company that makes it, it's uh, like Jules Jurgen, I think. They make the chronograph, but it, you, it, the the one Obama wore, he got it as a gift from one of his Secret Service guys, has like the Secret Service star on it. You can only get that in the store. And I went to high school with a guy who got in the Secret Service. And I didn't I was, know there was a Secret Service store. Yeah, there's a Secret Service store. <laughs> Interesting. And so like, uh, I was like, do you know? He goes, I'm not in the Secret Service anymore, but I know a guy. And he got it for me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got to get rolling here. And I want to thank uh, Amit and Rock Tales for letting us use the studio. I want to thank both of you guys for thank doing you. this once Please. a year. I know you're fucking swamped. Uh, Los Angeles Watchworks, one of the greatest, absolutely the 
best uh, restorer of any kind of watch that you have that's beat up. The casework is wild. The casework is insane. It's weird. Shout out to John Mayer who sent me this a couple years ago. I've been wearing this like crazy for a few years now. It's kind of faded, right, Gertie? (laughs) Uh, This was the John Mayer G-Shock. He's done the blue. He's done the white. He did the kind of gray one that was off the keyboards. And uh, now he's doing some collabs with some friends of his. That new AP he did is wild. The new AP is insane. Yikes. And uh, I wanted to give him a shout out real quick. And then also a lot of people wanted to see the new Speedmaster in the white right here. That's there it one. is. Thanks, Beautiful. Omega, for uh, providing that uh, white face. I think that this is probably the best watch for under 10 grand. Hands down. The readability on that thing's great. The, yeah, the legibility is insane, and the great red, bracelet and the red on there. And I've always been a huge fan of the Alaska Project, which I laughed at the first time I saw it. And uh, me and Kevin were at Inspiration, and a guy was wearing a Kia's friend. And I go, "What's that dumb thing?" Did he have the the thing on he it? Did. I was, <laughs> okay, I, okay. I was, he had the down and on there. I would only wear it with a thing, <laughs> yeah. dude. But uh, and then I quickly fell in love with it, and I've got the uh, Seiko Swatch version of it, which is uh, crazy. And Seiko Swatch has been putting out some great shit. So uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in, and uh, you know. Hit us on uh, Instagram, Kev G Christie. Kevin, uh, G. Kevin Christie. G Christie. And uh, he's got an amazing art show in New York. It's still Have going on. show up right now at a gallery called The Hole up till April 27th. If you want to look at art, go check it out. And yes. a great, great Bo Gore there from Los Angeles Watchworks. And once again, thank you, Amit Zappa, for having us. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, please subscribe to the podcast on YouTube and catch me on tour. And this podcast is brought to you by Standard and Strange. And if you use this code right now, you can get 10% off on a Y2 leather. A lot of people ask what jackets I wear. I wear Y2 leathers. They never go on sale. And uh, they've decided to do a code here for a week. Let me get it for you. The code is what the fuck. Here it is. Go to Y2 or uh, standardandstrange.com.